right, welcome. I almost said welcome, Wolf Den. We are not Wolf Den today, although probably have a lot of Wolf Den. Wolf Deners, let me fix my screen real quick. And we're going to hit Nixmas in July. This is day one. It'll be short. It'll be sweet. Just need to plant this seed, open this loop, and then we're going to keep going because there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And uh, believe it or not, everybody has everything they need to be prepared. But it's kind of like, uh, you know, you have the newest, uh, you have access to the newest operating system, but you haven't bought a new computer, so it can't run it. And this is kind of what we're running into is we have this old hardware, especially if you were born, you know, 50, 60 years ago. So if you're 50, 60 years old, your hardware is a little bit older and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but also we haven't been updating our software. We haven't really been thinking critically about things. We just accept things when we're five years old, 12 years old, 20 years old. This is how things are. This is the paradigm you adopt. This is the religion that you adopt. This is the political party that you adopt, whatever. It's that dogmatic thinking and it's never updated, which means when shit hits the fan, there are, for in this analogy, there are programs that can be run that will help you uh, navigate it and even thrive. But your software has not been updated and it cannot run the program. Your beliefs are too uh, dogmatic. Your language, the communication that we talked about, day zero, all of these things need to be upgraded over time. It's not a rush, just relative change over time. Otherwise... When things get chaotic and crazy, we will not be able to run the programs, the, the way that we need to operate in order to succeed. So I hope that makes sense. That's my analogy for the day. This is day one. It is an extension of DALA, directions for acting like an adult or don't act like an asshole, and an explanation as to why uh, people don't like and rebel against the best leaders, critical doom loop, supporting and voting for the worst. This is a byproduct of... Um, it is a program we run by default because our operating system has not been upgraded. We do not sit around and wait for somebody else to operate or upgrade our upgrade our operating system. This is work that we have to do ourselves. We spoke in depth about that on day zero. Really taking responsibility for what's going on. Cool. All right. So quote of the day. Quote of the day. This comes from... Uh, Stanford professor that teaches about leadership. Don't know how to say his last name. Ronald H. Hey. Instead of looking for saviors, we should be looking. Uh, should, should be calling. Okay. Instead of looking for saviors, we should be looking or calling for leadership that will challenge us to face our own problems, problems that will require us to learn new ways. So. In quotes here, I added my own little notes. Instead of looking for saviors with good news, we should be looking for or calling for leadership that will challenge us to force our own problems that require us to learn new ways. Update our operating system. Update our software by doing work. This is, I think this was written in 1994. Okay? 1994. This is the same thing saying the same thing as seeking dopamine without effort will ruin a person. This is just on a collective level, and this is well before crypto, and this is way before Facebook. This is a thing that humans have done since the beginning of time, looking for good news, dopamine, without effort, without work. Okay, so you're going to see this again and again and again from different time periods, different eras, di different decades. Just to highlight that this is not new. We always act like all of this is new. It's not. It's not. Hey, this is a book about leadership, and you can see here it's called Leadership Without Easy Answers. Now, look, the economy uncertain, education in decline, cities under siege, crime and poverty spiraling upward, international relations roiling. We look to leaders for solutions, and when they don't deliver, we simply add that to our list of woes. Let me move this. And we do them and ourselves a grave disservice. We are indeed facing an unprecedented crisis of leadership. Again, 1994. That was 20-something years ago, 25 years ago, whatever that is. Okay. 
The reason I'm sharing this is because I keep going back to older stuff. I go back to the 80s, Filters Against Folly. You go back into even back into the 20s, 1920s stuff written. It's the same stuff over and over and over. So it's important to stop acting like, oh, no, the world's in decline. 2022 is the worst. Well, you could look at like, you know, 1992, 2002, 1982, same stuff over and over for the people that are looking. 1972, 1962, 1952, yada, 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 yada. Good book. Okay. So I'm going to recommend you do is after this, or if you had time to let things percolate, go to your six word update. It's very useful for yourself. This is part of upgrading the software. It is. Uh, working through a six word update, even if it seems like so much work, when well, you can already tell the problem. If coming up with six words to summarize something you just watched or reviewed or studied is a problem, well, it's very possible that you just want somebody to give you good news. You don't want to do the work. You don't want to make six words. Just pointing that out because it's very real. I feel it too. This Everything I talk about is stuff that I struggle with, I work through, I have to think about for myself. Uh, I am an incredibly fallible human just like everybody else. I want to make that clear. So this is coming from a place of experience, okay? Six word update, I strongly recommend that you do it for the reasons just stated above. Now, remember from week zero, seeking dopamine without effort will destroy a person. This is the biggest glitch in our software. Biggest glitch by far, it always has been. Now, as the world accelerates, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Let's look at this from both sides. It becomes easier to distract yourself and it becomes easier to distract you. As more data comes in, as Facebook has algorithms, Instagram has algorithms, Twitter has algorithms, and big data improves over time. The ability to capture big data, the ability to sort who uh, fast forward their Netflix because they're probably impulsive. Let's show them things that are very distracting and play on their impulsivity. It gets easier and easier to do that, which means it gets easier and easier to be distracted because it's easier to distract you. It's a little bit of a chicken and an egg, but we can't control media. What we can control is ourselves, ourselves. So this is how it works. Just kind of a tangent here. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the media, they are data driven. They say, if we show this polarizing thing, more people share it. So let's share more polarizing things like this. It's not malicious. It, they are actually uh, going by the data. They may know that it's the outcome is not going to be favorable, or they might know there's consequences, but ultimately they're data-driven, which means if collectively humans stopped sharing dogmatic polarizing stuff, the media would stop showing it. Uh, is that saying that the media... Facebook, whatever, is not doing anything wrong. No, it's saying you have no control over that. So until you stop seeking dopamine without effort, you have no right to blame the people that keep putting it in front of you. You keep rewarding them with money by participating. Of course, they're going to keep putting it in front of you. So until you have controlled what you can control, your own dopamine-seeking brain, it is, my, in my opinion, not the best use of resources to wage war on... Fox News for fake news. You waging war on it is putting attention on it. That just incentivizes them to do it more, right? So seeking dopamine. Beware the victim. Beware of the victim. Uh, don't become a savior, right? So you got to beware when a victim crosses your path that they are, are victimizing themselves. And by saving them, you are kicking off or accelerating the drama triangle. And by becoming a victim, you are kicking off an accelerated triangle. So I hope we have the ability, that everybody watching, part of this software update, I hope we have the ability to process these things on multiple level. I'm not just saying look out for victims. I'm also saying don't become one. I'm also saying recognize a victim, rescue a relationship, and stay far away from it. Yeah, that's my suggestion anyway. So we're, we're always processing these things on multiple levels multiple levels because they're, they're bi-directional. It's not single directionality. Language is important. Language is very important. Go back to day zero, get a refresher on that. 
Uh, we're going to be very diligent about our language here, and I hope language continues to improve uh, in both thoughtfulness, six word updates are really helpful with that, and specificity, six word updates are helpful with that. And we ask what we mean to ask, and we answer what was asked. That is how, again, that software upgrade allows us to run future programming. I remember dogmatic versus a scientific orientation. Dogmatic is very black or white with a non-controlled process. Typically, scientific leaves room for an infinite number of acceptable answers. Again, these are things that are going to be necessary to function in the world that we're stepping into. They're necessary. They, they're not necessary to function now, but they make life a lot easier. All right, so today's open loops. We talk a little bit about valid versus useful. Just a reminder about consequences. We did talk about valid versus useful in day zero. We're just going to remind, quick reminder there. Becoming a victim. We talked about being aware of the victim, but there, there's going to give you a high level overview of how individually and collectively we become a victim thinking that we're doing something else just so that we can uh, recognize it and then do whatever you want with it. If you recognize it and you choose to keep behaving that way, that's okay. At least it is a conscious choice. At least it's a conscious choice. As long as you have, as long as you are aware, you're cognizant of the choices you're making, who am I, who is anybody else to judge you for making that choice? It is the appropriate, in my opinion, the appropriate responsible thing to do is to help you see what you are actually doing. And then you do whatever you want with that information. And most people will change the way they behave if they actually recognize how they are behaving in the second, third, and subsequent order consequences. And the two tyrants of leadership, which is a underpinning, it is a core teaching in the CCA program. Uh, all of this is in the CCA in one way or another. It's a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more interactive. There's a lot more workshopping and stuff like that, individualization and stuff. Okay. And quick bonus, I'm just going to open this loop. Do not try to close it. I know you're going to, but I'm telling you not to, just so that I said it. The business most authorities are in. Most authority figures are not in the business you think they're in. Okay. And hopefully this helps make it clear and gives you something to think about. And I'm, I'm not going to close this loop. I'm going to leave it open uh, so that you can just ponder it. All right. So valid versus useful. It's very important, it's very, very important that we recognize, or at least consider, my opinion, is consequences are a byproduct of behavior, not of names. Consequences are a byproduct of behavior, not of names. Which means, you can see people say, well, I am Christian. And then they think saying that over and over and over is important. But if you watch their behavior and they are acting in a way that is diametrically opposed to their fundamental beliefs, the consequences of that, whatever they believe, heaven, hell, uh, good luck, bad luck, karma, whatever, is actually a behavior of how they have behaved, not of the words that they use. Uh, this is part of understanding dogmatic thinking because most of the dogmatic thinking is in language only. You say, oh, I will die if I don't get an A on this test. And you believe that and you act accordingly. And then you get a B minus and guess what? You don't die. Right? So there, there's a, a lot of our beliefs are tied up in the words that we use, but they don't match reality. Consequences, the, the best thing to do, in my opinion, especially in Nick's Miss, and, and when I'm talking to people and trying to help them solve problems or improve the quality of their life or whatever, is describe the behavior. Describe the behavior, not the name. Okay, so it's not necessarily uh, effective to go to a stranger and say, hey, you're being a victim. Because I'm not being a victim. Well, the consequences of their behavior is not coming from the fact that we can title it. It's coming from pointing out the behavior and the consequences of that behavior. Okay. <clears throat> so when we talk about valid versus useful, a lot of times people will use names. They'll say, actually, that is called X, Y, Z. And that is not useful 
to people if they cannot identify the behaviors that make it X, Y, Z. Okay. That is a, uh, you're a sociopath. Like, yes, I am. No, I'm not. I don't know what behaviors need to be described so that I can modify them to get different consequences. If I don't like the consequences I've been getting, just calling people names, uh, labeling things, not useful. It can be valid. You can be technically correct. It is the most useful to try to describe the behavior that is leading to or causing the consequences because it's the consequences that we want to be different. Consequences are outcomes. I hope that makes sense. You can let me know in the chat. I am watching the, I watch the comments every now and then. So in order to be useful, we need to identify, describe, and modify behavior, not labels and names. People get stuck on labels and names. That's it. Those are dogmatic thinkers by and large. And again, technical versus helpful, just another way of saying valid versus useful. Um, technicians tend to do this all the time. Describing the behavior is more useful than labor labeling people or groups of people. This becomes very important when we start thinking about how collectively we victimize ourselves. Uh, describing the behavior is more useful than labeling people or groups of people. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to give examples and describe the behavior. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. You just watch in the, in the, watch yourself, watch in the comments. I'll say, well, here's this behavior and here's how it caused this outcome. And people will say, that's loss aversion. And by saying that, all they're doing is they're, they're trying to recall something that sounds right. They're saying that's loss aversion. Boom, check mark, and their brain goes, cool, you got it. And they don't recognize that own behavior in their life. So we again, I'm going to do my best to describe the behavior. I'm not just going to say, well, because of loss aversion, this happens. And you'll say, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then we will both fail to realize it in reality, which is where the consequences manifest themselves. Cool. So that's where I'm coming from. You are welcome to try to do the same or not, but this is how we actually move forward together, which leads to leadership, authority, which need to be separated. And I'll explain why I think tomorrow and abdicating responsibility, abdicating responsibility. This is now I'm going to overgeneralize here. Just think about the general behavior. Don't get stuck. Don't get lost in the trees. Get stuck on the details. Remember, it's the, the behavior pattern. Okay, behavior patterns can manifest themselves in different domains and they'll have different names. Okay, I hope that makes sense. What they call one thing in computer science, the same exact pattern of behavior might be called something else in medicine. It's the pattern of behavior that leads to the pattern of consequences. So here's the leader authority doom loop. Again, the language might change. Watch the pattern. People want better leaders. I get it. We need better leadership. Get Donald Trump out of office. Get Biden out of office. Get whoever out of office. Because we need better leaders. I hear it all the time. Our leaders need to make these laws. It's very dogmatic thinking, by the way. Uh, people want better leaders. It's what they say. It's what they demand. And even if they don't say they want better leaders, it's implied by the fact that they try to get rid of leaders they do not believe are sufficiently good at what they're supposed to be doing. And so can we agree that people want better leaders? That is said all the time. Better leadership. You send your kids to school. Do you, you want the principal and the staff to be better leaders? Right? Let me know in the comments if that resonates. If, you th if there's places in your life where you're like, ah, this association, this organization, this business, we need better leaders. Okay. Step one. Step two, or the second, I guess more of a concept than a step. People want dopamine without effort. They want good news without work. So we demand better leaders. That's what our words say, but our behavior is always chasing good news without work. 
So there's this weird thing where we think we're going to elect somebody and they're going to do all the work and then they're just going to give good news all the time. Consequently, people vote with their time, attention, money, and actual votes for the promise of dopamine without effort or good news without work. Run through it one more time. People claim to want better leaders. Their behavior and their hardwiring, their, their uh, neurology. The neuroscience is, oh, we want dopamine, and if we can get it without work, that is very, very compelling. If we can just refresh Facebook and get good news all the time, why would I do any work on myself? Okay, so what we do is we vote with time, attention, money, and votes for the promise of good work without, or the promise of good news without work. Give me good news. Give me dopamine without effort. Yeah? See where this is going? The r real solution to most problems is a byproduct of modifying your behavior. Modifying your behavior, which means, yes, you, me, all of us are part of the problem. The solution is also somewhere in the gray area. It's not about banning this or unbanning this. There is a solution in the gray area often that is missed because if you go back to day zero, that dogmatic orientation, the dogmatic thinking, I'm either right or I'm wrong. It's either illegal or illegal. Uh, killing babies is either bad or good. There's always context. And so the real solution to almost all of our problems is resolved by changing our own behaviors, aligning our own behaviors, learning how to communicate, being less dogmatic, and operating in a gray area. But dogmatic thinkers do not accept the gray area. Most people do not want to be told they are part of the problem, part of the dogmatic thinking, part of the, uh, the confirmation bias that is delivered all the time. They're right, I'm wrong, there is no gray. My way or the world's going to shit. So, nobody wants to hear that they have to, if they want good news, you know, next quarter, they have to modify their own behavior. And that's true for all of us. I'm not picking on anybody. We want better news on average over time. We need to update our own operating system. We need to behave in alignment with our actual values, which means we need to know what our actual values are. All right? So, herein lies the rub. Effective leadership, good leaders, they are going to point out where you are contributing to the problem, where your thinking is limited, where your software needs to be updated, where your behavior is contributing in ways that you may not see, so that together, leadership and the constituents can work together and find a solution, which may lay in a gray area that nobody wants to accept exists. So... Real leadership is not good news without work or dopamine without effort. That is poor leadership. That is clinging to authority by playing on confirmation bias. Most authorities, I think I have a slide for this, most authorities, Democratic, Republican, religious, pick a religion, doesn't matter, um, media outlets, they are in the business of distributing confirmation bias. That's the business they're in. That's how they make money. They confirm the bias that you already have and they strengthen it and they double down on it and they polarize. Not because they're evil, but because that is what you want. If you didn't want it, you would stop viewing it. You would stop sharing it. They would stop making money and they would follow the data to a different strategy. I'm not saying it's ethical. I'm saying Here's an example. I am telling the world right now that our behavior is the reason the media is polarizing. Nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear that the media is evil. You guys are good. Everything you're doing is right. Keep doing it. Let's attack the corporation. Now, guess what? We're back in Cartman's Triangle. I'm being a rescuer. You're all being victims. Media is... Uh, the persecutor or the villain and we have no real solution we got to make up good news all the time or if we don't have good news we got to make the other guy even worse that's good news that they're worse than us 
So, see how this works? Humans, by and large, vote for the person more willing. Again, vote. Time, attention, money, video views, votes. For the person, people, or party more willing to promise delivering good news. Right? And good news is subjective. It depends on what side of the issue you fall on. Roe v. Wade, good news. For some people, horrible news for others. Roe v. Wade getting uh, overturned. That's good news for some people, horrible news for others. You see how sitting around waiting for good news without doing work, living in the gray area, practicing scientific thinking and orientation causes polarization and we vote over and over and over and over for the person that is least likely to display leadership because that person is the person that is the least likely to give you dopamine for nothing. I hope that makes sense. It just, you can, you as a, now as a leader, we have to recognize this. So when people are in a, sitting around being all morbid and give me good news that we're not giving good news just to give good news so that we can maintain our authority. That is not leadership. And as a constituent of a party or multiple parties or initiative, then we need to recognize when we're sitting around demanding good news, when we could be out reading, writing, engaging, having dialogue with the other party, understanding where they're coming from, looking for solutions in a gray area that maybe we haven't thought of yet. Else we have a doom loop of continuing to get worse and worse and worse and worse leadership and abdicating the responsibility to them more and more and more and become and victimizing ourselves collectively. This is how we collectively become a victim. We sit around and we demand good news and then only half, you know, half the world gets it at best constituents of side A of this uh, issue. And then we repeat it over and over and over and over, and we wonder why the world has gone to shit. And we continue to think it's going to get better by voting for people that promise us good news. We know better, but that's what we want. We don't want to deal with ourselves. So what we do is we rebel against the best leaders. We rebel against them because they're jerks, and they suggest that we, our party, our side, as individuals, that we need to change our behavior because we're contributing to the problem and we think it's outrageous that we could possibly be contributing to the problem, but guess what? We are. Sorry, I just ranted there for a minute, but we are. And a real leader is going to show us that. So oftentimes, the leaders, and you can all be leaders, the leaders are not in uh, positions of authority. They're not in the positions of authority. Thought leaders are often not in positions of authority or they're in positions of authority because they give a lot of good news or polarizing news they're not actually leaders so at some point which we'll talk about either tomorrow or the day after we need to separate leadership from authority we cannot use them synonymously and we cannot wait for authority to display leadership and we cannot fail to lead people because we don't have authority anybody can point out to another person with their permission and respectfully how their own behavior is contributing to their problem. That is leadership. You do not have to be an elected official to do that. In fact, it's really hard to do that because you will get rebelled against and kicked out of office and you'll people will be mad at you and they'll vote for somebody that will give them better news. Again, better news is typically the other party is an idiot and you're smart. That's not actually good news. That's confirmation bias. Make sense? You can let me know in the chat there. Things do not get better for all the reasons I just described, and the cycle continues. In actuality, things get worse because, as I said earlier, good news, dopamine, is actually polarization. It's confirmation bias. When you say, uh, hey, good news, Donald Trump is leading the polls, that's not objectively good news. That's good news for a segment of the population. It pissed off the other segment of the population. Now, instead of figuring out, hey, 
how can we run this country in a way and how can we allocate our resources and how can we just be better humans? We're all caught up in trying to say why Donald Trump is awesome or why he's evil. What the fuck does that have to do with our own behavior? Nothing. You see the, you see the rub? You see, you see the trick here? Is we will keep abdicating responsibility as long as we believe that getting good news from authority is how we improve the world. And it is not. It is not. That good news should be a byproduct of us changing our behavior collectively. So if more people went to a neighborhood that was not like theirs, knocked on doors and said, hey, let's get together and talk. You believe this, I believe this, but let's see if we're just like both decent humans. If everybody started doing that, there'd be a much higher level of empathy, way less polarization, and the things that came of that would become objectively good news. People are more empathetic towards each other, and they're more willing to find solutions, and they're being less dogmatic. That is, in my opinion, objectively good news. But we don't want to do that. We just want to vote for somebody and then be some mad at somebody or be happy with somebody based on what happens. So this is the cycle. This is why leadership is so difficult. This is why, in my opinion, we need to be aware of what we are voting for. We need to be, we're just, are we seeking, what are we watching? What are we consuming? Are we seeking confirmation bias or are we trying to make things better? And if you are seeking confirmation bias, in my opinion, in my mind, you lose the, you forfeit the right to complain about the news. You're not doing anything to make the news better. You're leaving it to others. All right. So open loop lesson. One cannot expect only good news without bill, without being willing to do any work and also demand better leadership. You do not get to do that. I mean, you can try, but it, it will not hold, it doesn't make any sense. It's diametrically opposed viewpoint and behavior. Uh, you cannot expect only good news without being willing to do any work and also demand better leadership. Right? And one cannot chase dopamine without effort and then cast the blame for the outcome on anyone else. So you ever went out gambling, you're playing in crypto, you're staring at charts, you forget to run your business because you're, you're high on bull market charts you do not get to cast the blame on the outcome on anybody else you are chasing dopamine without effort that is a problem right so this comes back to you vote for the candidate that promises you the best news you don't also get to come around and complain about leadership because from the gun if you understand fundamentally what we're talking about here then you know historically the person promising the best news is going to be the one that displays the lowest level of leadership because the leadership is not good news. Leadership is, hey guys, we got some work to do. Yes, you. I know you're part of my party and you're a constituent of mine, but we don't have it all figured out either. We need to do something on our part. That's not good news. doesn't feel like good news Not in the context we're using it here. Cool. So this is this is the these are the things we just want to think about. You know, if you hire a if you hire a mentor or a coach or you join a group, you want the person that's going to tell you you're awesome all the time or you want the person that's going to challenge your beliefs and behaviors. Most people will hire the person that tells them they're awesome. And those people often fail. And they wonder why they're coach why they keep hiring coaches and it never works. Uh, because a good leader is going to show you where you're dropping the ball. For us, it's where what we do is we point out where your behavior is not aligned with your espoused values. Meaning, if you say you want to spend more time with your kids and every chance you get, you stay late at the office to pick up extra work, you're being an a-hole. That's what Nick Smith's uh, 2021 was about. Okay. Hope that makes sense. And we're going to wrap up with this. This is the two tyrants of leadership. This is from the CCA. We talk about this a lot in the CCA. Scrutiny and expectation. There are many sides of this. We're going to talk about two of them. The same two that I encourage you to talk, think about at the beginning. 
as a leader and as a constituent. Okay, so as a leader, you have to understand you will get scrutiny and expectation because people just want good news and they don't want to do any work. They will scrutinize everything you do and then when it is successful, they will expect all of the benefits even though they scrutinize you the whole time. They'll expect credit, blah, 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 blah. Now, as a constituent, as a, as a uh, you know, general population, in this case, you may be a leadership, a leader in one area and just a, a follower or a constituent in another. We have to be aware of our, propen- our propensity to scrutinize and have expectations because you do not get to scrutinize and demand good news and then expect all the benefits. You don't get a fight against something with everything you have do zero work and then expect a benefit off it at the back end will that happen of course that will happen should you expect it or contribute to it i don't believe so all right so this is william ruckelhaus bill we'll call him bill bill ruckelhaus bill ruckelhaus was in charge of the epa Environmental Protection Agency. And in 1970, they had a Clean Air Act. And he was in charge of, I think he was from Tacoma, Washington. He was in charge of figuring out the Asarco case. Okay, there's a mill used to be in Tacoma, Washington. And it wasn't clear how much waste was safe. It wasn't clear at the time. And They came and they said, Bill, either you need to shut down this plant or leave it open. That's your decision to make. You are the authority. You have been elected into this position, the EPA. Do we shut this down? If we shut it down, everybody loses their job. Economically, that's huge. Like this whole surrounding area. So, uh, depends on on this job. However, the pollutants may be giving people cancer. So pick. And he said, no, I am not going to pick. I'm not going to pick. We are going to ask the community. We're going to talk to the community. We're going to work out. We're going to workshop with the community. We're going to understand what's important to them. And what happened, back to scrutiny and expectation, is the community got pissed. And you could read it. You could Google it. Read all about it. The community was pissed. So the EPA, the EPA said, no, Bill. Those people are not smart enough to make this decision on their own, and they won't want to make this decision on their own. And his response was, well, if we don't think people are smart enough Uh, to be democratic, then we have two options. Take away all of their power or educate them. So think about that. Take away all their power or educate them. If we take away all the power, then it's not really democratic, is it? We can't take away people's power. That's not what we stand for. That's not what this nation stands for. This is his case. So we have to educate them. That's the only logical solution. That's why I show up for next business, stuff like that. Um... So we'll get into this technical and adaptive problem and how, how this all works out because this is very important to, to understand how this all played out, in my opinion. EPA said they're not smart enough, and he said, well, then we educate them. And he went to the uh, community and said, hey, I'm not making the decision without you. We're going to educate you. And you know what they did? They got so pissed off that they were being asked to contribute you want us to show up you want us to talk about this you were elected you make this decision and what this is what this is is an extreme abdication of responsibility nobody wants to make a choice they want him to make a choice so that half people can celebrate the other half will be pissed off it was a real thing so the epa said was giving him a lot of pressure said you can't do this they were pissed The people, the community was pissed. Now imagine being a leader in this position. In this case, Bill Ruckelhaus had tremendous leadership. We'll talk a little bit more about it in future days. I'm going to tie it back in. 
So the technical problem, what people want to do a, in a polarizing world, in a, in a dogmatic world, is they want to make it a technical problem. And we'll talk about technical adaptive problems tomorrow. Technical problem leads to news like this. Tacoma gets choice, cancer risk or lost jobs. It's very dogmatic. Hey, this is what this guy's dealing with. How do you win? How can any of the community win? This is the kind of behavior over and over and over that puts us in lose-lose situations. So what's more important, health or jobs? And he said, well, we're going to educate everybody and we're going to make this decision together. And what they found through these workshops that people did not want to go to because they did not want responsibility for the outcome. Now, no matter what decision he made, somebody would have called him a shit leader. But nobody wanted the responsibility for the outcome. This is, again, an abdication of responsibility. I hope you can see why this is such a problem. They wanted anybody other than themselves. They wanted an elected authority to make the decision so that somebody could give them good news or something to be pissed off about, but do not ask me to show up and have conversations and work on improving my life or getting the outcome I want. That's outrageous. Don't ask me to do it. You do it. That's how we think. Okay. So what happened is he did all of these uh, workshops. And through these workshops, people started asking questions they never thought about people are asking questions about uh, like cancer risk but also is there a risk to this is there a risk to that all of these things that the EPA had never even considered about addressing and now they're going wow these are things we can address and what happened over time is in a few groups a few of these groups business owners from all around were thinking like well hey I need employees so maybe we could slowly wind this factory down and you can place them in uh, my organization and, you know, other business owners organization. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, we could do the same. So what happened is like a replacement program. They realized only through his determination to be a good leader. He did not give the EPA what they wanted. He did not give the people what they wanted. And if if you split that up even further, the people that uh, wanted to get rid of the factory, he did not give them what they wanted. The people that wanted to keep the factory, he did not give them what they wanted. Through leadership and through cooperation of constituents, they found a much, much, much better alternative, which was let's slowly wind this factory down because we're not entirely sure of the environmental impact. And we will do it at a rate that we can place people into these these new jobs and these upcoming industries and we even had uh, industries and economies moving to the area to capitalize on that which improved the overall economy of Tacoma Washington while placing everybody into new jobs and over time entire that factory is closed out entirely removing the cancer risk the toxins that are being emitted <sighs> makes sense Now imagine, just put yourself on any of these, put yourselves on a factory worker who's saying, oh God, he better, this is my only source of income, he better, he better keep this factory. I'm going to sit around and wait for good news. Or being somebody that maybe has a history of cancer in the family and no family member is working at the factory, you're going, he, he better get rid of that. How could he possibly allow that cancer factory to just be there? And then you sit around and you wait for good news. The EPA is saying, make a decision because other people, people aren't smart enough to make a decision on their own. So just make a decision. Any decision is good news for us. But none of those things that people are demanding would be good leadership. They demand good leadership. And then they demand all of the things that make a poor leader. We have to be aware as a leader, this is going to happen as an authority it, it's even worse because as an authority, you have something to lose. You can get voted out of your um, position of authority. But also as a constituent sitting around hoping that things work out your way, waiting for good news, abdicating responsibility 
to other individuals or elected individuals, it's a ticking time bomb. Most of society is a ticking time bomb for this reason. And every, every now and then it, it blows up and we're surprised. And we blame leadership, but it's not. It's our behaviors over the last however many years. So just think about being in that position. Think about how the, the, the answer was in a gray area and nobody even wanted to consider it. And he couldn't, he didn't make a decision. The EPA didn't make a decision. And it's a good thing because through collaboration, they actually discovered a number of things that they never would have considered had they sat up in their office and made a decision because that's not what leadership is. All right. So the quick lesson there is if you do not people, if you do not believe capable, people are capable of making decisions, then you have to remove all their power or educate them. And if you remove all their power, then you just got to be honest about what's going on. In some situations, that might be okay. But you are not a community. You're not community driven. You're not, uh, you're not, you're being dogmatic most likely because there's a lot of things you're not going to see. And again, as a community member, picking a side and then sitting around hoping and praying, you're contributing to the problem. You're going to continue to only vote for people to confirm your existing bias. It's not until you get in rooms of workshops where half the people want to get rid of this uh, company and the other half depend on it. You, as a as, as general population, you need to get in these rooms and talk to these people. You don't sit in your house and hate everybody that wants to get rid of the factory or hate everybody that wants to keep it. As a leader, you need to get these people together and they need to talk and you need to help facilitate. This is called an adaptive problem. You want it to be a technical problem. Technical problem has a right or wrong answer. Most problems are adaptive problems. We'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. All right. So it's good. You can read about this if you want. You'll see, you'll see, you get the real story in like a biography or leadership, leadership book. It's in a few different leadership books, but then read the news. Look how polarizing this is. This is, does not tell the story at all. But this is what we read and this is what we vote for. We go to bed thinking, man, cancer risk or lost jobs. And then we vote. And then we, we demand better leadership. And when we get better leadership, just one more time, repeat this. We get better leadership. Somebody says, no, 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 I'm not making this decision for you. You fuckers get together and we're going to talk. We say, no, 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 I don't want to do any work. I elected you so I don't have to do any work. Well, guess what good leadership is going to do? An adaptive problem, when the answers aren't clear, they're going to ask for input and feedback, and they're going to ask you to modify your behavior in some way. If you don't like that, you don't get to demand better leadership. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. My mom said, I'm reading the comments here, my mom said, no, everything is black and white, eye-opening for me that she, yeah. So here, I'll give you guys a little bit of a insight is the world generally makes quantum leaps forward, but they're quantum leaps. They're not slow rolls because there are generations that are super dogmatic. There are generations, unfortunately, that are sexist. There are generations that are racist and so on and so forth. And it's not until that generation passes on that we really make a huge collective conscious consciously forward right so it's really helpful to be aware of that so yeah a lot of times parents um especially if they're have strong political views or religious views or or uh ethics what they believe to be access they, they do believe everything is black and white um so so the the game here is not to flip a switch and change everybody's thinking it can't happen it's to work on ourselves and more importantly what what nick's miss in july is really about which you'll find out on day three is the, the quantum leaps forward are going to come with our children, with posterity, and they will come faster and smoother if we are grandmas and grandpas that can be open-minded. Otherwise, we are the limit. It is the grandmas and grandpas right now 
70, 80, 90 years old that are, are the limit to a quantum leap forward. And as they pass, we will make a quantum leap in, in many areas, right? Sexism, racism, whatever, all these things, technology. There's a whole bunch of people that are still alive that like won't use an ATM because they're afraid of technology. As they pass, there will be a leap forward and just overall adoption of technology because 100% of the population will have adopted technology. So this, this stuff comes in waves, but it's not overnight. It's years and years and years and years of, of modifying behavior and, and trying to practice better leadership and be better constituents and work together and all that stuff, in my opinion. But the history generally supports that. We make quantum leaps forward and they're very painful. They're very painful because even though people are like, ah, collective consciousness is going up, it's, it's painful when you don't have the software to run that new program, right? When there's still so much of the population that is going to be outraged that women have rights, you know? I don't, I mean, I think those people still exist, which is absurd, but as long as they exist, there's not going to be a quantum leap forward. So that, that leap happens, that collective consciousness or, or just, you know, more accepting world happens in, in waves like that. So that's why we modify our own behavior over time and look for a relative improvement. But um, old, old views die hard. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. And old money, old influence, old authority will fight like hell. Make it less pretty. That's the way it goes. That's why we prepare ourselves. That's why we talk about this stuff. You don't have to agree with me at all. But it would be remiss to not bring it up, and it would be remiss to not suggest people consider some some of these things and think about them. So here's your homework. I, I implore you to open this loop. Everything we just talked about. Reflect on all the times you catch yourself chasing dopamine or hoping for good news from an authority figure. How often are you chasing dopamine? How often do you turn on the news hoping something good? How often do you see a news article, and this goes both ways, that you're like, yes, it's about time, or like, oh, this sucks, and you share it. And you share it. You don't talk to the other party, you don't consider, you don't read it and uh, go back and check the facts and really consider whether or not it's good or bad it just confirms your bias one way or the other so you send it out or you wait to hear something from cnn or fox news or your favorite youtuber this is my attempted demonstration of this is my demonstration of attempting to lead i'm telling you right now that behavior is part of the problem it might be very 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 small part of the problem the little thing but let us not forget that the big things are indeed made up of the little things so catch yourself. Just journal about it. You ever uh, think, man, I really, uh, I really need to get to the gym because I, I would just, I would feel so much better. I'd have so much more energy. I feel better about myself. I might play with my kids more if I just got back in shape. And uh, I'm supposed to go to the gym, and right now. And then you open up Instagram and you start looking at fitness models for inspiration instead. That is chasing dopamine. Instead of doing work, the work is right in front of you. You know what to do, and you are looking for something external to give you a little hit to motivate you. Dopamine motivates. That's what it does. It motivates you to move. It motivates you to learn, and it actually helps you learn. So how many times are you refreshing Facebook? You know the work that you have to do, or you're not sure the work you have to do. Instead of finding out what the work is you have to do, instead of having a difficult conversation with somebody that you know is going to shoot straight with you and tell you the reality of it, you go check out the social medias and try to get a dopamine hit there or check your portfolio or whatever. It's part of the problem. And on the flip side, if you're a leader or you have an authority position, how often are you, think back to this dude here, how often are you saying, okay, 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 I'll just give you what you want. I'll give you what you want so that you still like me and, and I can keep my position as an authority in your mind. How often are you doing that? Because Bill Ruckelhaus didn't do that. Now he's a hero. There's stories about him. It is phenomenal what he did, yada, yada, yada. 
everybody wants to take credit. EPA wants credit for the amazing work they did in Tacoma, Washington, even though they made him swim upstream the whole time. Because right, a good leader, they're not just going to tell you what you want so they can keep their authority position. That's what authorities do. Authorities tend, there's always exceptions, but elected authorities or media, people that have earned the right as authority, have done so by and large by distributing confirmation bias. They know what side you're on and they tell you things that you interpret as good news and so you keep them in a position of authority because they represent your beliefs. So how many times are you that leader or that authority position? Not a leader at all. But how often are you in an authority position? Uh, parents can do this as an example. Uh, employers can do this. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm just going to say nice things because I want them to like me as a boss. I want my I want my son or my daughter to be my best friend. So I just tell them good news. You know, I don't I don't want to criticize them. And I I don't they're just kids. And, and you know, I don't they'll maybe the they're just kids. They'll learn what they need to learn at school. Let's abdicate responsibility to those authority figures. You see how this just it, it turns into a doom loop. So I journal about that. Right. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together. Got two more days in Nick's Miss. We're going to talk about ad adaptive challenges versus technical challenges. Um, this right here, this, uh, this case is an adaptive challenge. The answer is not obvious. Okay. Um, a technical challenge is like, hey, I need this mole removed. And the doctor goes, yeah, I know how to do that. And they remove the mole. That's a, an authority, a doctor can perform that it's in it's out it's done maybe they test it to see if you know there, there's any cancer cells no there's not okay it's done it's very black and white there are absolutely clear-cut technical problems problems of leadership are not technical problems you hire technicians for technical problems for the most part leadership is when just as an example an adaptive problem is when you go in and you get a mole cut out and then you find out you have stage four cancer now, the doctor, as a leader, could spend all their time trying to cure a cancer that, you know, is maybe they determine it's not really curable. So the adaptive problem is now, how do we get our affairs in order? How do we communicate with our family? How do we spend our time? There's no clear cut black and white answer for that. So a doctor that is a leader would be like, hey, look, I, I could, we could do everything we can to fight this, but we need to get your affairs in order. We need to talk about... Uh, you know, I can introduce you to somebody to help get your accounting together and, and we need to figure out, you know, how do we talk about this with our spouse, uh, our children and stuff like that. That's an adaptive problem. Okay? Leaders need to be adept at adaptive problems and in order for adaptive problems to have a solution, the rest of us on the other side need to be willing to modify our own behavior and stop hoping somebody's going to deliver a magic pill because it's not going to happen. All right, so we'll tie all of that together. Same time for the next two days. Go hit your six-word update. Hope this was useful. Hope it opened up some loops. Uh, again, this is a big open loop because we're going to tie. We've got two days to tie it together and really talk about. So, what the hell do we do with this? Step one is be aware. And again, hope it was helpful. Appreciate you guys. I'd love to see a hundred six word updates. Let's see if we get that done.